first game of the day. I love being able to jump right into the action. How's everybody doing today? Group therapy going head to head with We Were Here, the three man roster that knocked them down to lower bracket 3 0. They now have a shot at redemption to bring this back. Both these teams are in the lower bracket. They both face elimination. These points they earn in the tournament will qualify them to the spring finals, a LAN event between Europe and North America, a showdown to qualify to the world finals later this year. We see already a lot of pressure for group therapy as Suniki falls massively behind. Yeah, we were here is going to have to play very defensive when Walrax decides to use those offensive cooldowns, but hasn't even used the Infernal or the Dark Souls just yet. And Sunakai already having to use his Touch of Karma. FedEx taking a little bit of damage as both Mayline and Sunaki trying to get a little bit aggressive here in midfield. Galoon with the way of the crane should be able to keep his team nice and stable, but a nice hex was snuck in by Lone Tar. And that's what group therapy is going to be looking to do in this matchup whenever Galoon decides to use that way of the crane, which increases his damage and also makes it so he heals with his damage, and he's getting hexes, and fears, and incapacitates and stuns to really slow that down. Yep, Galoon actually getting interrupted here around the corner. FedEx is looking to try and take him out here in game one, but he is able to avoid that situation. Now instead switching targets back onto Sunakai. Fortified Brew is a good defensive tool to stay alive throughout this attack, and Sunakai is making a fair trade. We were here trying to develop some pressure here onto Wall Ricks. Lone Tar denying some damage with these Whoa. healing waves, but quite a huge wave of damage is crashing forward. Walrix seems to be struggling to just stay afloat. Lone Tar gets Ring of Peace away from a potential Spearling Totem, and we were here looking to close very early on. Lone Tar manages to sneak into that Spearling Totem, connect a huge heal with that Ascendance, but even still, Walrix falls behind. I like what Galoon's doing. He's pushing in even without the way of the crane to assist on damage. When they are doing their offensive go, they have crowd control on Lone Tar. There really isn't that much of a threat. Sunakai now going to be moving to midfield once again, getting some more pressure on Walrus. They got the big cooldown, the unending resolve from Walrus. Whoa. That's not going to be available for another three minutes. Good burst on Sunakai, but with the touch of Karma, he should be fine, but now is increasingly more of a vulnerable target now that basically has no defensives left whatsoever. Good crowd control initiation by We Were Here. Not much left for Lone Tar to deal with this exchange as Walrix takes control of the fight to give Lone Tar some space to breathe. Now they're chasing down Sunakai, who is hiding down behind the pillar. Galoon trying to fake cast that spell lock of Walrix. Managing to connect some heals and starting to stabilize. No full hex secured by Lone Tar. Good aggressive place here, but Sunakai out of line of sight of Walrix. Walrix unable to really capitalize on this. Both Fists of Fury going to be parrying each other with that Turbo Fist Honor talent. Now that Fists of Fury is no longer available, damage is going to start to slow down. Mana equal on both sides. It's still anyone's match at this point, moving closer to dampening. Yeah, and one of the things we've seen from these healers like the Resto Shaman and the Mystery Reaver Monk, it's a lot more difficult for them to sneak off and get these drinks that have been so important in this new patch. The Resto Druid normally is playing Night Elf, so he can easily sneak off, use the Night Elf Shaft. Oh, those ring of pieces! Yeah. That's what I've been waiting to see is someone get turned into a volleyball, <laughs> Walrix the volleyball. I mean, it was pretty, I mean, it looked cool, but it really didn't get too much. Let me have my fun, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, I was going to say, for Galoon and Longtar, it's going to be much more difficult for them to sneak off and get drinks. So once they're out of mana, that's it. It's I don't see them really sitting down and getting a large chunk of that mana uh, back, especially if both teams are playing at their highest level. Walrix taking quite a bit of burst. Incapacitate on Lontar. This could just be it. Lontar playing relentless. Any crowd control he's in, he's stuck in that. He has no trinket to get out, no spearling to really catch up Walrix. As Sunakai and Mayline and Galoon can continue this push, Walrix could be very very vulnerable. This matchup looks incredibly difficult for group therapy. Now we were here have established a huge lead getting into dampening and that's going to be critical as healing is significantly reduced. FedEx looks to carry the team. Crowd control into all three members. They get denied by both Mayline and Suniki trading. Now Walrix on the back foot as we were here look to reverse that wave. The crane activated. Galoon adding some extra damage into the fight and that extra damage may just be enough to at least tap Lone Tar out of mana. Ring of Peace knocks Walrix out of that earthen wall. Totems protect these ring of pieces are so difficult for the team, both defensively and offensively, to get anything going. Lone Tar needs another 13 seconds. Walrus actually has an ending resolve available in three, two, one. Is it going to be enough, though, to stay alive? Triple leg sweep as he's critically low on health. And I don't know if he's going to be able to hold it up. Spearly oh. oh. came off cooldown for Lone Tar to stay in the fight. And suddenly, Galoon is out of mana as well. Both teams battling it out. We're not even into dampening. Things are going to get more and more. 
been more interesting from this point somehow, some way, group therapy have stayed in it. That was, I don't want to say that was a little lucky, but that was unbelievable play coming from group therapy. Walbrook's barely managing to survive. Now Sunakai having to play a little bit defensive. Kill touch up Whoa. back up. Big swap on Galoon. He manages to survive with the fortifying elixir. Gladiator safeguard procs to keep him alive as well. We were here, they need one more push, but Lontar, he's gonna be able to deflect it, at least for a little bit, with the Earthen Shield totem. We're gonna need to see a ring of peace from Sunakai or Galoon to really get Walrix out of that defensive cooldown, but so far they haven't found it. One ring of peace, but they're gonna need another one. The radius is just a little bit too big. Instead, now FedEx uses his ring of peace to try and deny the reconnect to Walrix. There's not much defense. It's do or die. Walrix is against the wall here in game one he does not want to go down to we were here again in this best of five but it's just looking like it's going to be the case he's getting overwhelmed he tries to gain away but they're in hot pursuit to take down the lord of destruction we were here the three-man roster have pulled it off in game number one in a dominant fashion the king of warlocks gets slapped off his throne the question is easy open they need to do more to set walrix up for success because if you're a warlock with a death knight in your face and a windwalker in your face that is already enough work on its own. Walric's gonna need to try to find some space here and get away from these melees that want to cleave him down, already using that gateway. Let's see if group therapy can bring this back and tie up the series. Yeah, we'll have to see. Sunakai kind of taking quite a bit of damage very early on with the incapacitate from FedEx onto Galoon. Touch of Karma gets traded out and Sunakai ports away. Interesting decision there. It seems like so far we were here. They're a little bit behind and really not too many offensives have been used so far by group therapy. FedEx and Lontar starting the game exactly the way that they needed to with crowd control chains onto Galoon to deny his healing, forcing powerful defensive cooldowns from the likes of Sunikai and Maylines. Walrix is trying to set up for huge burst damage here moving forward. Lands a triple shadow fury, really trying to take it to we were here in game number two. But with Wave the Crane activated, Galoon can just shake that off and leave the charge adding tons of extra damage to the team forcing potentially even more defensive cooldowns from group therapy perfect timing on that way of the crane walrix is trying to sneak it out here towards the end with that mortal coil but gets denied and tons Whoa. of damage is almost closing this game out in moments since it started lontar has managed to scramble it back together but at the cost of his almost entire defensive arsenal we were here are just dominating yeah really there's not too much that walrix can do in this situation the only thing he has as a solid defense is that Earthen Shield Totem and Sunakai and Gallon do a good job with their Ring of Peace. They can just knock him out of that quite easily. FedEx responds with his own Ring of Peace, but it just gets knocked out of it so easily. This double monk setup is really punishing for this Restoration Shaman Warlock. Warlock doesn't have much mobility. I'm wondering if FedEx could have potentially ran like Wave the, or sorry, uh, Ride the Wind, something like that for Walrus to at least try to get away for a moment because with so much uptime from we were here, I just don't know how Lontar can heal through this. Lontar has secured a hex, but his team is the one that's still quite far behind in terms of health, and this is game two. Are they just gonna move to match points so quickly here in the lower bracket? Walrix is facing elimination, and it's not looking good overall in this series. Trying to do his best here, getting a spell lock onto Gallon, but with Way of the Crane activated, this attack is almost gonna be completely thwarted. If they can't sneak in a kill in the next couple of seconds, Gallon will immediately start to top off Sunakai. A Maledict timing here to try and soak up that healing actually forces Sunakai to retreat away. The crowd control looks good from Lone Tar. FedEx is trying to close the match out, chasing down Sunakai, but Gallon connects that life cocoon, absorbing all of the hits and denying the kill. Mayline death gripping FedEx back and away from Sunakai. Gallon just simply needs to restabilize and recover, push forward. They've still got another minute before the real defensive cooldowns become available for group therapy. Lone Tar is trying to regenerate some mana behind the pillar gets denied by gallon but now walks into a full hex a bit of a mistake here by gallon potentially an opening for walrix sunikai though is preventing it with that paralysis holding walrix in place as we were here begin to retreat away and try to coordinate their assault and sunikai gets behind the pillar touch of karma coming up in 15 seconds and that is when we were here normally feels very confident to push in get aggressive and try to all in take down walrix so it's going to be a short window where they have touch of death they have touch of karma way of the crane everything that they need to take down walrix is available and there's no major defenses for group therapy they don't have the unending resolve they don't have the spirit link totem you can see lontar he's just sitting very far away looking for as much healing as possible wants to keep walrix topped off but sudika has been under a lot of pressure in this match fedex doing a really good job making sure that his team is getting pressure 
forcing them a little bit defensive, but Sunakai now with a touch of death, looking to get aggressive on Walrix, but really Walrix not taking too much damage. Group Therapy using the map quite effectively to set up for a late game kill. Walrix leads the charge. Good double stun initiation. Fake cast the mind freeze on that chaos bolt, but he's still under pressure. He's trying to counter aggress at the same time. It's a risky decision to make. But he tries to go for it. Gets a ring of peace to, on his cast. He goes for it with the unending resolve to try and secure the chaos bolt, but gets denied by Diffuse Magic. Now he is heavily behind in this position. Spearling Totem is likely to be required, but he's still leg swept, unable to connect it with one second left. Lone Tar keeps him alive. He fake casts the mind freeze on the chain heal. Nice play by Lone Tar. Secures the hex off the back end of an interrupt by FedEx. Good coordination as group therapy try to bounce back in the fight but we were here are already retreating back around the corner and able to restabilize maybe not fedex moving forward trying to keep their momentum yeah and that's the second time in this series fedex has saved his team's life by spamming out vivify on that windwalker monk you don't really see windwalker monks do that often with actually just casting out heals but with lone tar and crowd control with relentless walrus barely surviving at 10,000 hp two games in a row FedEx oh. skills are what kept oh. him alive. Mayline taking some burst. Needs to get out of line of sight. Walrus with two Chaos Bolts. If he had Dark Soul available for those, he might have been able to just close out the game. Mayline really didn't have any defensives. And now we were here behind the pillar. It's really good for them to get these little resets because all their cooldowns uh, are such a short timer for Sunakai with the Touch of Karma, the Diffuse Magic, the uh, Fortifying Brew. They're all, all, all only 90 seconds to two minute cooldowns. If they can just get behind the pillar, and uh, get those back up. It allows them to be a lot more comfortable with an offensive push. But in the meantime, Lone Tar actually sat down. He got full mana back, and that is definitely going to be something that's going to be keeping group therapy in this game. That's a big improvement over game number one. Lone Tar was totally tapped on mana at this same point in time in game one. Now with a full mana bar to continue healing deeper into dampening, it could be an opportunity. I think that Lone Tar and FedEx are both playing this a lot better. We see a Hex being casted, although defensively, onto the Death Knight. Walrix is able to secure a fear on the way of the crane. Perfect timing. Good Shadow Furies this round by Walrix. Sunikai deflects the kill, though, with that touch of karma, redirecting the damage. Walrix under so much pressure in this match. So many interrupts, so many stuns for him, and he's not really able to move that much. And we were here, are dancing around the Destruction Warlock quite effectively by being able to avoid damage during this moment and then push forward. Walrix looks like he's had enough of this. He's actually replaced his Demonic Gateway into the opposing team, perhaps using that as a getaway from this Death Grip. Unable to move for a second. Wants to make sure that he uses that Demonic Gateway for some offensive cooldowns. He doesn't simply want to just gate away from the normal attacks or the baseline neutral play from we were here. He's holding that gateway until something more threatening like a touch of death is committed and he's playing it quite patiently looking to try and bait them away from that pillar. Fear into Chaos Bolt. Good combo by Walrix here towards Mayline, but without more dampening, I don't expect Mayline to go down on that Death Knight. Death Strike is quite a potent heal in the current meta. Uh, however, they have forced anti-magic shield, so they are at least getting something for their efforts. A lot of de defensive cooldowns are going to be forced out. Infernals do get dropped out. Now we were here. They might have to consider playing defensive as they look, look towards a potential all-in here onto Lone Tar. All three members do make their way, but Lone Tar gates away to safety. Can he find a hex out of that fear? That would be beautiful. Incapacitate from Gallon will shut that down, but Lone Tar, he could be stuck here for quite some time. I don't know if he has any way to get away. Astral Shift was used. He's caught into a stun. Can they just kill him? We were here, really, just going to look at Lone Tar for just a few moments, and they're able to take him down. FedEx with a nice ring apiece, a counter ring apiece, coming in from Galoon, or Gallon, to keep him out of that defensive cooldown. Lone Tar still trying to cut away and keep himself alive with his ascendance. He has the Spirit Link Totem available. That was a really close call. Ooh. Big damage from We Were Here. Full Hex secured on Gallon. Nice crowd control by Group Therapy. Perfect recovery on Lone Tar's part. He's looking unfazed here in game number two and wanting to secure this match. Sunikai low on health. Lone Tar low on, he low on health. He's trying to make a getaway. He's managed to get around the corner. Mayline can't get over there. He's going to be switching targets, but without Sunikai's support, Walrix is raining down terror with these Chaos Bolts. Lone Tar again look looks for a Hex. Gallon portal out of line of sight and avoids it now buying himself time to top the team but his mana situation is not looking too great and fedex is getting some good pressure cataclysm hits the whole team walrix is starting to ramp up that dark soul unfortunately though is completely avoided it will line up well with his infernals in a, roughly another minute and 30 seconds and that big timing window is where group therapy can look to close the match Walrix once again repositioning that demonic gateway so if he gets death gripped around the corner he can use that to escape and lone Tar takes the opportunity 
opportunity when the enemy team is playing overly defensive to reset his mana. Good presence of mind to play it out for a late stage match. Lontar is setting himself up for success here in game number two. It's a much better played round overall from the team of Group Therapy. And they're showing signs of life. Yeah, this map is really good for them to escape and enforce the Sunakai to run so far away. Walrix, he has his Infernals and Dark Soul up in one minute. If they can hold on, we were here is going to be in a lot of trouble. That's Life Cocoon forced out onto Sunakai as he is in his Ring of Peace and portaling away. Lone Tar throwing in some Lava Verse as well. You can see how offensive Group Therapy is playing this compared to the last game. They're just forcing We Were Here to run out of line of sight consistently. Walrix actually sitting on his gateway. He replaced it here and is trying to stay away, but he gets death gripped. Walrix immediately running back to his gateway, portaling to the middle of the map. Lone Tar in a good position to throw off some off heels. It's not going to be too much crowd control for him. But Walrix what? still getting dangerously low. Spirit Link Totem was dropped out by Lone Tar. That was the unending resolve and the Spirit Link Totem. And we were here. They still have enough cooldowns to make an offensive push. Walrix is just trying to reverse the pressure with some big Chaos Bolts, but doesn't seem to be enough to really stop the onslaught. We're at 30% dampening. Grip into a triple stun as we were here. Look to close out game two. Group therapy were looking good, but now they're desperate. Walrix is holding on by a thread with no way to really escape to safety, and he's going to fall with a well-timed interrupt by Mayline towards Lone Tar. We were here on the best map. But when you're on a Guardian Druid, I don't know what the heck you want. You definitely need some group therapy uh, if this is the cop yeah. you're locking in. Walrix was tired of being trained down, so he went on one of the only specializations in the game where it's unlikely <laughs> it is. Good luck thing, attacking me now, Walker DK. I, I don't know if group therapy has enough damage to force We Were Here off of Lone Tar. I feel like Lone Tar is on a one-way train to Pain Town, and a we pain train, if you will. Uh, Windwalk of Deconation. <laughs> I mean, this is already not looking too stellar. He's a volleyball. Resto Shaman stuck between two rings of pieces. <laughs> Spirit Link Totem already traded out. And I mean, Walrix is probably frustrated, but I don't know if the bear is the right move here. I'm not going to lie, though. This looks exactly the same as when he played Moonkin. <laughs> this is exactly how it looked when he played Moonkin. It's probably better. All right, Lone Tar actually trinketing out, still using Ghost Wolf. Ghost Wolf is going to be very effective for Lone Tar, especially if he's playing certain traits it allows him to heal up while he is in ghost wolf and also suppresses snare so it's very effective at kiting i think if lone tar can stabilize in this game potentially walrus i'm not exactly sure how much damage does a guardian druid provide i mean it's it's not really that much i don't think i feel like guardian druid is probably one of the weakest tank specializations currently in arena i would have much rather seen a protection warrior mm. or a protection paladin if they were going to go the tank route and try and uh, out dampen their opponents. Maybe Walrix doesn't have any experience on those tank specializations, but the Guardian Druid is a little bit more cuddly than scary, so. At least his transmog looks well, good. If they can't kill Lone Tar, who are they gonna be able to take down? I mean, if you look, Lone Tar 100% mana, Gallon, he's already down to around 70%, looking for a drink. If they can shut that down, maybe they can make this work? Um, we're going to have to wait and see at this point if Walrix is uh, going to be going to the National Park. He's, you got the well-timed demoral demoralizing roar there to interrupt some uh, damage during the stun lock combination, but there's still more to follow through. Gallon has Way of the Crane available. He can boost his damage at any moment. He's waiting for the defense of Lone Tar to crack before pulling the trigger on that attack. How is Lone Tar going to stay in this fight and bounce back? Does he have enough healing or is it going to lack? We're about to find out, man, here very soon. Triple leg sweep. Walrus trying to add some extra damage and finally some heat is getting packed. Gallon denies it. That way of the crane perfectly timed. What is it about Walrus on the Guardian Druid? What what defensives? I really don't know too much about the class. I'm assuming you know much more than I do. What is back it, when, back what when is we it? played it in Legion a yeah. really long time ago. I mean, if the Honor Talent still exists, he can run Den Mother and increase health of his team by X percent, like a uh, Fortitude buff. He can also redirect damage from the target being attacked to himself if he's near them. Whoa, 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 right whoa, now, he's, he's not close to them. Yeah. Okay, he's, what? He separated and just got destroyed. And this defeat versus the fake Zebras were all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.